Ladies and gentlemen, boys and pearls, welcome to episode 12 of the Bearded Pearl podcast. I'm Caleb. I'm Justin. And this is a podcast about the fiber arts and crafty shenanigans. Welcome, everybody. Hi. Episode 12. I forgot what I was going to say. What is today? Today is January 17th. 17th it's 2021. Sunday. 2021. We don't even know. I don't know. What is time anymore? And it's only been two weeks since we talked to you last. I know. Which is kind of a record for us. New Year, new us? Probably not. Probably not. Um, but we're going to keep up with this every two-week schedule as long as we can, because it's actually <laughs> kind of nice. So maybe just this once. So Yeah, maybe, maybe just this <laughs> once. Um, but welcome, everybody. Welcome to all of our returning viewers, and welcome to all of the amazing new viewers that we have. And we thank you for joining us on this crazy, crafty shenanigan ride. Where can you find us? You can find us on uh, YouTube as The Bearded Pearl, also on Ravelry and Instagram as The Bearded Pearl. So thank you for everyone that's participating uh, on Instagram and Ravelry as well. And YouTube. Lots of comments. Lots of comments. Uh. <laughs> Lots of fun comments. <laughs> Which make us laugh a lot. Yeah. So... What have we been doing? Well, it's winter in Wisconsin, although There's you not. wouldn't know it because it's like 38 degrees outside and the snow is melting and it's very unjanuary like here it right is. now. Uh, that's what happens when you buy a new snowblower, like winter ends and it we, warms up. So we had a really like disgusting snow because it was like, what, 30? 34 degrees outside so it was really heavy wet and gross and we have an electric snowblower now that does a good job except in the heavy wet snow and we just broke down and bought a new snowblower because that's what happens when you live in a place where it that's what happens when you get really cranky at 2 a.m. when you've been shoveling heavy, for three hours, yeah. heavy wet snow. So, yeah, um, we we upgraded. We got we got a chance to use it. We did have a little... I mean, I guess you could call it snow. It's more like... Barely. And it was like an inch and a half. Snow cone slush falling from the sky. But uh, but that's what happens. You buy a new snowblower, and then it doesn't snow the rest of the season. Yeah. So it's, it's beautiful today. The sun is actually shining. I can see it out the window. Uh, mm -hmm. The birds are having a good time. We were hugely entertained. We, we were catching up on the fat squirrel and needles at the ready. And everyone's talking about how fat their squirrels are, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, we, don't, we don't have a ton of squirrels, actually, in the winter. Mm -hmm. We get them all summer. I mean, they're all around the village uh, and around our neighborhood. But they kind of leave our yard alone in the winter a little bit. I don't know why. I think it's... I it's think probably it's probably because we have all the squirrel... Um, Baffles. Baffles, thank you. On all of our bird feeders, so they can't really get to... I feel like food. when all all the areas where our bird feeders are get piled up with snow as we snow blow and stuff in the winter, so it's probably a little bit harder to get to the feeders for the squirrels, but right. we have lots of birds. Uh, it's still very much winter. We'll, we'll get it at some point. Speaking of birds, what was the one that we, we saw? What are you talking about? So we, we love to feed the birds. We love to see all of the birds and we kind of catalog all of the birds when we start to see them like fly and migrate for the year. And what was the new one that we started seeing uh, a couple weeks ago? Was it the Carolina Wren? Oh yeah, a Carolina Wren. So beautiful, but funny and sassy like a chickadee, but shaped more like a, like a house wren or a Carolina Wren, but... A really fun color. Imagine too. that the Carolina know, wren is shaped, shaped like, like a, a Carolina wren. But it has it has all of these like golds and browns in its colorings. It's it's pretty. It's fun. But that was a new bird that I haven't seen before. Big news. At least in our new yard. Bird. I know. Right. Welcome to 2021, where we're trapped in our house and all we do is stare at birds out the window like a cat. To be fair, we did that before COVID. Well, yeah, but they don't have to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we fooling at this point? Um. Yeah, so we've had new birds. The weather actually has been really nice. Mm -hmm. It's It's been warm enough that you can go for long walks and enjoy being outside. Uh, the snow's been 
it at least looks like winter kind of outside, although it looks a little like spring today with things melting. But what else have we been up to? We've um, we've had a chance to catch up on some of our favorite podcasts, which has mm -hmm. been nice. Uh, it's always good to connect with people. We've been joining our Zoom knitting night, although we missed it. We missed it last week. Last week. week. We were uh, very low on the energy and social motivation scale. It's kind of one of those things where if you're just not feeling it, you're just like, not feeling it. How rude would it be to join everybody and just sit on mute and not talk the whole time? That's kind of what we were feeling. It's it's basically the the Zoom equivalent of someone calling you and they're like, couldn't you have just sent a text? Yeah, but we but yeah we we did go the week before. It's been a lot of fun to connect. It's a really fun group. We were just low on energy. We've been busy at work too. Yeah, that's the, probably the biggest thing that's happened since the last new year time. has hit the ground running. Yeah, and I've actually been going in the office quite a bit because there's a lot of stuff that needed to get done that I just I can't do from home. And so I've been working from home for the most part since mid-March of last year. And every once in a while I'll pop in the office just to get some things done and, and catch up on some stuff there. But yeah, so it's been nice, but it's been busy. I've been in and out and yeah, it's just... Busy. Meanwhile, I got an email last week that indicates I'll be home at least until July. So excited. This podcast will continue to serve as proof of life for my existence <laughs> every two weeks. This is how the people will know I'm still alive and haven't been killed for insurance money. What is that? Day, day 17 of the hostage, hostage situation? Yeah, something like that. Or what is it now? Like December 49th, 48th? <laughs> Uh, I've heard people describe. Yeah, so it's it's been a busy few weeks. Last weekend, we had very big plans to take down Christmas decorations. Which didn't really happen. Well, because you decided that the one thing I wanted to do oh, right. could instead be hostily taken over by a different home improvement project that was not even remotely planned. Yeah, okay. I'm back with you now. Do you ever have those moments where you're like, why on earth? It's it's the same thing with crafting. Like, you go to a store and you're like, oh, I can make that. I'm not going to pay, you know, $40 for a pair of mittens when I can make it at home and I've got the yarn and the supplies. Well, and when I out. could spend $80 in three weeks making it at home myself. Right, and it'll turn out half as nice. Yeah. Um, so, I work for a large plumbing manufacturer. So if you're, if, if you're, if you put two and two together, you know where we live, you know where I work. Um, but so they, they have an associate sale and that's basically where they sell a lot of the like discontinued products and, um, just like excess products that they can't get rid of fast enough. And they have that usually, I think twice a year. So since I started working there, we wanted to redo our upstairs bathroom a little bit and get a new vanity and you know maybe spruce some some fixtures up well not so much redo like a mild refresh right like like, like a refresh yeah like, like a facelift for the bathroom um more like more like just slight like botox injections for your <laughs> migraine anyways <laughs> so we wanted to give our bathroom botox yeah we i was able to pick up a bathroom vanity that had the bottom cupboard piece and then the vanity top. And then it took me a year and a half to, a pick, over... out, to pick out fixtures. Yeah. So the fixtures that you wanted were really expensive. Tray pricey. And there's no, there's no way. Like a snowball's chance in hell that I was going to pay full price for those things. <laughs> Worth it. Beautiful. Oh, absolutely. But like... The faucet, not even the handles, the faucet costs more than the vanity. <laughs> right. And so they had it at the first associate sale where we got the vanity, but I wasn't going to pay that for it. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting until they went on sale again, and they were at the associate sale. Finally was able to pick them up. And so we've now, mind you, had this vanity sitting in our basement for... 21 months. Yeah, almost two years. 
and finally got the fixtures ready to go and I don't know what like snapped while we were supposed to be taking down Christmas decorations but I'm like that's it I can't deal with this anymore this vanity is getting installed today mind you I've never done this before have zero plumbing experience so I'm basically a YouTube expert and googled everything that's generous maybe a YouTube enthusiast okay whatever either way it's been <laughs> I basically looked up the like installing a bathroom vanity for dummies video it's really not that hard um as long as you have the right tools for everything but disconnected the old one that went off without a hitch surprisingly was able to clean everything and get everything set up for the new vanity got the new vanity set in place got the vanity top on like started to reposition and make connections went well, to close well, one one relevant part of this story our house is 95 years old yeah and it's about this big and it's small it's it's a small house and our our main bathroom we have two full bathrooms uh, thanks to a basement remodel which is great but the whole point of this is our house is small and our rooms are small including the bathroom we're not talking about like a palatial master bath in a brand new like 4, our, our bedroom home. is big enough for our bed and our dresser and that's that's about it I mean, it's not quite that small, but yeah, anyway, not that big. that's Anyways. relevant to the story. Small spaces. Yes. Yeah, so the old, bath, old house, is small. small space. So we had to be very careful in choosing a vanity. I hope you're following with this. We should have been very careful in choosing. A we vanity. were choosing a vanity and we were careful because I measured the old vanity. I love, by the way, how you keep bouncing back and forth between we and I in this story. Well, because I did all the work and I bought it. <laughs> it was just your idea. So, installed everything, got it, I, well, thank God I didn't glue it to the top and installed the fixtures because when it was set in place and looked great, I was like, you know, something, something seems a little off. I went to close the bathroom door and the bathroom door didn't close because the vanity's too deep. By maybe three eighths of an inch. Yeah. I mean, it... So, the spec sheet says that it's 19 and like 1 16th inch deep. It's like 19 and a half, which normally wouldn't make a difference, but the way, like the spot in the bathroom where our vanity is, which is conveniently located right next to the bathroom door, it has to be uh, shallow enough that the door can close. It wasn't. It wasn't at all. So we've now been sitting on this vanity for almost two years, and it's too big. The top, the vanity top, not the not the covered portion. The cabinet is fine. It's the sink. Right. Top. Yeah. So needless to say, I laid on the bathroom floor for like an hour and a half, trying not to completely lose my marbles. <laughs> As I'm sitting there like this, trying to like scroll through like homedepot.com, overstock, trying to find these vanity tops that will fit. And then I don't trust anything because the spec sheets, where are they? Like, lies. Lies. And in hindsight, that's probably why it was at the associate sale because the specs were off. I don't even know that, the, like going back and, and looking, like I think the sheet says something like 18 and 15 sixteenths of an inch. Uh -huh. And, Which is clearly still wrong. Well, let's also not pretend like our wall is... I don't even know that we can blame it, the spec sheet. Let's just say it doesn't fit. Yeah, it for, it for real doesn't let's fit. Let's also not give ourselves credit for thinking that we measured the depth, because we didn't. We measured the width, because we were much more concerned about that no, space. I, no, no, I for sure measured the depth, because I knew that it couldn't be too deep, because a standard size for a vanity is like 22 inches deep. Way too deep. Yeah, there's... Yeah. Anyways. So we're on to plan B. Which is finding a new af vanity. After like a whole weekend of pouting and laying around being sad. And then having to reinstall the old vanity. We're, we're going to continue. I mean, this is like the most dramatic story for like our replacement bathroom vanity doesn't fit. <laughs> all, Again. All because I was too cheap to pay a plumber. So I was like, look, I'm going to do it myself. What is she? 
the cat is on the sewing table. She's playing with oh, pl- a spool of thread. Hey! Who knows? That looks like a foreign body waiting to happen. $2,000 oh. exploratory oh, surgery. Oh, it's my llama pen that you got me. Oh. She's turning on a little fuzzy llama on Sorry, we're, we're very distracted. Anyway, so, Vanity... This is going to be a to-be-continued story. Yeah. We have a plan. I went to the design It was one of those, like, yesterday. bless your heart moments where the thought was great, the heart and the intention was there, but execution was garbage. So the good news in this story, other than it's been a lot of laughs since then, and it's really, like, it's going to be fine. Okay, in the moment, I was not laughing. Well, yeah, you were real crabby. Yeah, I was really not happy. But the good news is... Moving the vanity allowed us to do another project, which was... <laughs> We're going to see a llama go flying across the room, followed by a cat launching into the air. Uh, the good news is we got our basement, which is finished, and it is our sewing and recording space slash yarn store. Uh, we got it like 50% cleaned up, which is great. Well, because then I was frustrated and didn't want the rest of the weekend to go to waste. Yeah. And mind you, it's like 7 p.m. So there's, I feel like I've wasted the whole day at this point. And totally just destroyed the, the basement craft space, trying to clean everything up. Because you know, it almost has to get worse before it gets better. Because in amidst all this reorg of the basement, I, uh, I just started tearing things out of tote bags and like boxes and containers and totally reorganized everything but it's actually nice and clean now yeah well it's nice and cleaner but you also created it's a, it's a solid 85 percent. but you created a cutting space for mm-hmm. quilting and the etsy shop stuff sorry i'm mm-hmm. so distracted by the cat so she's not she's not a big uh player with toys no. so this is unusual so player. i we have this big, gigantic, what is it, seven feet? Almost seven feet? Yeah, seven feet. Uh, seven feet by three and a half, or four feet. Deep table that we built for our sewing space, and then we had kind of made half of it a cutting slash sewing space, but it really just doesn't work well to have both in one spot. So then, last weekend, I ended up building a new like cutting station, and it works like a charm. Yeah, it's gonna be great. For and it cutting, conveniently, cutting, packing. It's residing where the old vanity was. Yeah. So all hope is not lost. Uh, we do have a solution in mind. I stopped by the design center yesterday, and I think picked out a new sink that is going to drop in. We're just going to get a piece of granite uh, or slate something cut for the top, have the hole cut for the sink. So more to come. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll share a picture when. And at this point, I might just I might just pay a plumber to figure it out. <laughs> like, it's on you, buddy. Anyway. anyway yeah. Wow. Welcome eight, to that little... 18 minutes later. So that, that's that been our life. We got, I'll say, about half of our Christmas stuff put away. Two trees are down. Uh, we got a lot of our holiday stuff organized. Mm-hmm. Our tree's still up in the dining room, which is nice because it's winter and it's dark lights. and it's sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's what we've been up to. We've watched some TV, some podcasts. Mm-hmm. Had some quiet time. Yeah, quiet time. What's that? Uh, We watched Bridgerton not once, but twice. Because it's real good. I'm going to need a lot more of that in my life. We started season two of Discovery of Witches, which is so good. And I read read the book series. Which is by Deborah Harkness. Deborah Harkness, the All Souls trilogy. Trilogy. And you haven't read the books, but you really enjoyed season one. I just lost. What are you doing? I lost my ring. How did you lose your ring? Because I was playing with it. Anyways, continue. (laughs) (laughs) The cat has lost her mind. You have lost your mind. We don't know what's happening here. Yeah, so it's been a a good couple of weeks. We've actually done quite a bit of crafting, which is kind of amazing. Although, this is generally a pretty productive knitting time of year for us because we can't do anything outside. And when it's warm out, we like to play outside in the garden and yeah. all that stuff. So this is this is normally a pretty productive time yeah. of year. So why don't we get into it? Okay. What are you wearing? What am I wearing? Oh, thanks for asking. Oh, sure, you betcha. I am sweating to death, by the way. Maybe we should turn the heat off. Hold on. That's, 
Not a bad idea. Uh, why don't you work on that while I... Okay. So, uh, I don't think I've actually worn this uh, on on one of our... I don't know if you've worn it ever. ...videos yet. I have. Yeah, I've worn it a few times. Um, really? Yeah. We don't see each other during the workday very often. Um, this is my Eli cardigan, and I forgot who wrote that pattern. It's in a book that we have. Um, that's okay. Did you put the book? I put it away. It's fine. Uh, this is my Eli Monster. cardigan. It's knit in Destination Yarn. Um, it is a fully cabled, uh, it's kind of hard to see. It's out of this book. Oh yeah, here we go. Hi, we're organized. Kate Oates. Kate Oates. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna show the back. So I'm not gonna attempt to stand up and turn around because we're in a small space here. But this is what the back of the cardigan looks like. It is fully cabled front and back. Um, I am obsessed with this thing. It fits really well, I love it. The only thing I don't love, it's been folded up uh, and I literally took it out and put it on today. So the collar is, I look like Dracula. I don't know what's happening. So this is what it's, the pattern originally. Yeah. And you made some modifications to the collar. I didn't do the little button tab and... And the, is it the edging for your zipper? Oh, I did an I-cord edging mm -hmm. instead of the pattern didn't have that in there. But I actually like it. Uh, the collar is big enough. Again, sorry, it's been folded, so this side is looking crazy. But um, it's loose enough that I could have on a button-down shirt and still have it zipped up all the way. And there's plenty of space in here, so it's not like a turtleneck. Um, but I love it. The only thing I have left to do, you guys can see, don't judge me, or judge me, whatever. Uh, put comments in, like it, hate it, whatever you want. Um, the last finishing detail I need to do, I want to hand sew a ribbon on the inside of the sweater. You can see the stitching line. I had problems with the zipper. I'm sure I talked about this before. I ended up, I started with the method where you take like, an, uh, like a latch hook or a knit picker and you like make a gauge ruler based on your garment, you crochet chain yarn up the thing, then mattress stitch your zipper to your sweater. That did not work well at all for me. It was puckery. I had I had stretched it too much. So I ended up ripping all of that out and I sewed it in, but I was like a maniac when I did it because I just wanted it finished. So you can see my crazy stitching here. Uh, it looks fine on but the you outside. Can, you can't see on the outside. I mean, you can if you get like three inches away, but if you want to get that close to judge me, there's probably not a lot I can do about it. <laughs> Other than maybe like flick you in the eye. Um, so I, I want to hand stitch a ribbon on the inside here, just so it looks a little bit more finished. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'll give it a little bit more structure too, which is nice so that it's not like flopping crazy. But also it's really nice to wear unzipped uh, and just let it sit. So who knows? I'll get cold again in a minute and probably zip it back up. Oh, that's great. Thanks for asking. What are you wearing? I'm wearing the Flax by Tin Can Knits out of Neighborhood Fiber Company, and it's the just the plain superwash merino worsted, and the colorway is Sheridan Circle. So I did the only one, oops, sorry. <laughs> That's recorded forever, you guys saw that, right? He punched me in the, the face. The only modifications I did uh, was add a few stitches in the sleeve, and then I decreased more down here because I I rarely wear my so my sweaters with my sleeves down. I'm always one of those people that pulls them up. And if it's not tight enough, it just bells out and gets super stretched out. So I made sure that my, my bottom... It fits really well. ...ribbing and, and cuffs were nice and snug. And I love it. Yeah, it looks great. And that neighborhood it, yarn is beautiful. Beautiful to knit with. And the colors are amazing. I love the tonality of it. Mm -hmm. But it's still it's still kind of solid. Mm -hmm. like it's not. And this, I knit this before Tin Can Knits added the short row shaping, so it's an optional additive. I mean, you don't you don't have to put it in the pattern. But um, they they recently pu published sort of a update. I guess an update um, where after you're done with your main portion of your increases for your. Reglan, you can add short row shaping in the back. So I didn't with this sweater, but I will if I make it again. It looks really nice. I love it. I, it's, I have, just, it's just a really nice, simple pattern. I have 
Well, I started to knit one a few years ago, and <laughs> I have problems with sweaters, which you'll hear about later. Um, although this one turned out, like, other than the zipper, this is a fully, like, fully cabled cardigan front and back, and I had a blast knitting this. It was probably the most fun project I've ever made, and it fits perfectly. Anyway, I love the, I love the flax. I have plans this year to re-knit the one that I was knitting before. I have yarn for it and everything. I'm going to add in a mohair, which I think will be nice. But I think I'm going to knit it without the garter on the sleeve. Just use the, the pattern itself as a template because it's it's well written and easy to follow on a nice simple sweater. Well, and and there so there's the flax, which is worsted, and then the flax light, which is fingering weight. Oh, yeah. Um, but I mean, you can do so much stuff to this. You could you could add cables down the side. Mm -hmm. You could just have stockinette. You could do what? a cable down the front. You could stripe it. I mean, stripes. It's 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 really just a great basic simple. Comes in a ton of sizes. Now I don't necessarily agree with the sizes, um, as far as they're classified because this is a medium large. And I am consistently a small, consi like very much a small. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it has a little bit of positive, positive ease, but not a ton. Yeah, that one fits so, well. Yeah, but anyways, needless to say, it comes in like baby newborn to a generous adult size. So yeah, that's fun. Should we talk new knitting? Sure. Since oh, we're sure. Half an hour in. Good lord. Got Starbucks for the first time in mm, six months. I don't remember the last time. Venti pistachio latte, extra Which shot of espresso. Really good. Yeah. It's it's almost like almond milk has that slightly almond flavor. It's almost like pistachio milk, kind of in there. I don't know. It's good. Anyways, knitting. Knitting. How about that. <laughs> You're clearly caffeinated. Do you have any finish? I'm on the clock and ready well, to rock. Knitting, crafting. We have lots of not knitting today. Mm -hmm. You want Should to show one of yours? Yeah, sure. Speaking of not knitting, so on my felt and gnome journey, I have made two more, and this one I added eyebrows to. <laughs> His hat's really crooked. I didn't notice that before. That's okay. Oh, oh. Um. Let him have his moment. I also give him blue eyes. It's fo it's focusing on you. There we go. But he's real cute. Um, I made this one shorter and give him a nice big nose. But this is a kit from Going Gnome. It was the six gnome kit. Um, really fun. I'm really enjoying kind of creating little characters and all the different gnomes. Oh, I thought it had a picture on there. Mm-mm. And so this this is uh, the second one, and then I made this guy and gave him a mustache. Mustache. And oh, Schnurrbart. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying the gnomes. I don't know where I don't know what I'm gonna do with them all, but it's gonna look like Children of the Corn in here before too long. Oh yeah, they can sit next year. The, you'll have the Golden Girls and the oh the Golden Girls and the gnomes will get frisky. Golden gnomes, mm. no. Yeah. Um, but so I've been, I've been really enjoying just sitting and making a gnome here and there. You get really into it. it it's, it's really fun, <laughs> and it comes together a lot faster than <laughs> if I were to knit a gnome. It would take a lot longer than just felting it. But you can give them all sorts of character and get kind of crazy with the details, and it's fun. I, I enjoy it. I have two more to make from that kit. Yeah, but. So that is what I have been working on in the felting world. Do you want to show what you have? I've actually knitted this week, the last two weeks. I feel like I haven't done a lot of knitting, and yet I have three finished objects and a half finished object. Right. Yeah. I've been, well, we'll talk about the sweater later. <laughs> so I finished a pair of socks. I started this right after we recorded last time. So this is, uh, hold on, get, what is happening here? Oh my gosh, I'm making it worse. 
This is uh, a finished sock. Sorry, they're unblocked, so they look a little bit crazy at the moment. But this is the Angry Birds colorway from Turtle Pearl Yarns. This is in her MCN base, her Merino Cashmere Nylon, which I had not knit with before. Um, everything else that I've knit from Emily has been on her regular Superwash Merino Nylon base. This, so this is the first time with the MCN, and it is amazing. They're really It's so soft. soft. MCN is just, it's great. Um, but I finished uh, both socks. I've got one on the blocker here so you can see it. So this was an experiment for me. I've been... Um, I've been looking for a new combination of needle size and stitch count. When I first started knitting socks, I started on a US 2, and I was knitting 64 stitches, which worked pretty well. Uh, you know, they, they always fit, and they were a nice sock, but I've been slowly going down in needle size and then going up in stitch count to maintain the same fabric size. So I knit these. It's a 72 stitch uh, sock on a US zero, two millimeter. Yeah, that's... I'm hardcore now. Um, so it created a really nice fabric. It's really dense, really cushy, but not, not like awkwardly dense. Mm -hmm. They look a little bit stiff just because they haven't been blocked yet. Right. But they fit perfectly, and this was kind of the combination that I was looking for. This is also the first time that I've knit a plain stockingette sock in maybe years. Like, I can't even tell you the last time I knit a plain stocking at sock. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Because I don't feel like they stayed up. Now I've not worn these yet. I've just had them on. They look like they fit much better though. They fit so nicely, and they're, they're, they're snug but not tight, mm -hmm. and they don't have really any positive ease, but not like a lot of negative ease. Right. So I think they're really nice. The only mistake, not mistake. The only thing I had to redo. Um, Definitely going down to the zero changed the amount of ease in the fabric that it stretches lengthwise. So the circumference hasn't changed much. But no, the, the circumference hasn't. The, the actual hasn't. ease in the garment... Yeah, has changed a little bit. Or I should say accessory, it's a sock. Um, has changed dramatically. Dramatically? <laughs> Dramatically and drastically. It's my new <laughs> word, okay? Um, what is in your coffee cup? I don't know, but it's almost gone, which is probably the problem. The... The, the ease, there, it's just so much different than a, like a regular pair of socks knit on the two. Yep, so the, the one change that I had to make, I, I knit an anatomical toe. Uh, so if you look here, this is the inside uh, of the sock. So big toe, pinky toe, this is the left one. Um, when I knit them, you know, I've been using this toe, so I kind of know if I try it on, I knit top down or cuff down. Uh, I know where to start the toe so that the sock fits well, and I actually made it too short. So I, I went by what I would normally go with. I had measured it on the sock ruler, you know, that slides in, and I ended up having to take it out and add maybe four rows. So it was a, a solid quarter of an inch too short, and I pulled it on and the heel had, you know, pulled under my foot. And so I, I definitely noticed the change in ease there. They don't stretch as much lengthwise. Uh, but very comfortable. This is, uh, I'm I'm definitely a fan of the stocking net uh, with the 72 and the US Zero. I did just a regular slip stitch heel uh, flap and then I do a garter, uh, a garter edge, um, which really closes up the gaps really nicely. So Emily's set included the contrasting or matching mini for the heel and toe. Funny enough, on one of them, I actually started to get where I was going. I'm at a yellow stripe in the toe anyway, and the yarn is, I mean, exactly dyed to match. You can't tell at all where one ends and the, the other begins. But I, I love this. Again, the colorway is Angry Birds. She has great um, colors. She really does. She has a lot of fun colors, uh, some really saturated ones. And and it, I don't know if you mentioned this, but the socks come in a matching set. Yeah, they're dyed to match sets. So here is an example of one of them. Yeah. This is, uh, what is this one? Trench coat yeah. is the colorway, but they're dyed to match. And and there's a ton. So this is not the MCN. This is the Superwash Merino mm -hmm. Nylon, but there's 460 yards here. Uh, so I will, well, I'm not going to dig it out of that bag, but there's, there's enough yarn left over. I just do contrasting heels and toes. I may have enough yarn left over from this pair to knit a pair of 
ankle socks, like shorties. So I'm going to experiment with that yeah. and see with a, a very short cuff, but for sure there's I mean, the short there's enough I think for a foot. So I love this. Uh, we're excited too. We'll talk a little bit, or should we share it now? Let's just share it now. Yeah. So Emily was uh, she was so kind and said actually a lot of you guys had reached out after uh, I had showed my mistletoe kisses socks that were. Uh, knit in her yarn. She said she had a lot of people reach out to her. So Emily was nice enough to send a coupon code to us for her shop. So we'll be sure to link uh, her shop in the show notes. Mm -hmm. But she's offering 10% off. The code is Bearded Pearl. All caps. Uh, all caps. And it's got no expiration date right now. So feel free to check out Emily's shop. She's a great Canadian uh, dyer. She's got a lot of fun colorways. I just noticed a couple new ones that she's dyeing up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a huge fan of self-striping sock yarn, and Emily uh, is definitely somebody I enjoy. So thank you, Emily, for the coupon code. That's very generous. Uh, feel free to check her out if you're interested in self-striping sock yarn. She's got a lot of options. Mm -hmm. And if there if there are any questions about any of the stuff we show or talk about, I, I almost always include all of that in the show notes. I might forget something here and there, but just let me know and either... Someone else will post it on Ravelry, or I'll go back in and link it in the show notes. Yeah. So just just let me know if I miss something, but you will almost always be able to find it there. Yeah. And we link those down below. So. And definitely, you know, if you have a question too, you can always comment on the YouTube video. Of course. We actually mm -hmm. did pretty well this time. We love the comments, and sometimes I think we actually of, got to all of them. Yeah, sometimes a lot of them come through overnight, and so we end up missing quite a few because it's hard to catch up and see in the, in the order that but they come we in, but love them they're they're, so they're amazing to read yeah. and they bring us so much joy and a lot of laughter so yeah. keep those coming but do you have anything else uh i, I have, do i have more finished objects i do so today's episode oh, yeah. theme is 50 shades of green and now i would call this teal you all know we go under the blue green debate, but which is why it's even funnier. Green green. To me, to me this is very blue. Blue green. But whatever. Aqua teal. Cerulean. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw more into the mix. Mur. Mur. I finished spinning. I think I had. You've been spinning like a like fool. Crazy, and not just four ounces here or there, which is the typical amount in a braid. It's like eight ounces at a crack. So I'm spinning braid after braid after braid. But this is Wound Up Fiber Arts. The base is her Super Sock, which is 90% Superwash Merino, 10% Nylon. And the color is Left Unsaid. And I got a two-ply DK out of that. So I got a vote. Oh, I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to count again, but it was somewhere along the lines of like 600 yards of DK, 700. That's really pretty. Out of eight ounces of fiber. Mm-hmm. And I have... So I, I spin on a shocked ladybug, and, which is a castle style wheel. So that's where the wheel's centered in front of you. And I have a attachment to mine where it's a bulky flyer. So I could actually have plied all of this into one skein, but A, I'm lazy and didn't want to have to take everything off and reattach it. And it's not hard. I just was too lazy to do it. But I don't mind having it in multiple skeins because also if you're winding an eight ounce skein, I mean, imagine all yarn of baby. The, yeah, imagine all of this in one ball of yarn. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Plus, then if you have it wound into a ball for a project, what happens if you only use you know sixty or one hundred and fifty yards of it? You have this giant ball left over. So it's kind of nice to have it in multiple skeins. So there, it's in three just because that's how it fit on the Because bottom. that's all that I could fit on, okay. like, my small <laughs> But buttons. you didn't do anything intentionally to divide it up that way? No. And I just, I just, I could have if I was thinking ahead. But all that could fit on a bobbin is whatever this circumference will allow me to pack onto it. So. It starts to get a little bit when crazy. it's When it stopped spinning, I knew that it was time for me to <laughs> cut it and just start a second one. Uh, but I love the color. It's... In the braid, it was a little more vibrant, um, but the the colors themselves blended really nicely. Mm -hmm. It it turned the orange and gold kind of muted out a little bit, but I like that a lot. I think it really toned it down just a, t a tad. It's always a little bit of a mystery 
when you this game you can look see at a dyed a braid and then see what actually happens when you spin it. And mm -hmm. of course it changes depending on how you spin and how you intend to apply. But right. I love it. Yeah, it was it was really fun to spin. I may or may not have ordered a little bit more. I have, I have no business, no business buying fiber. Should I, mean, I pan over a little bit so we can no. see the bins of fiber? No, we have one, two, three, four bins of fiber. So like four cubes. And I have zero business buying more, but she ha she has an update every Saturday. At We're not in the business of restraint here. 9 a.m. I've been very good so far. I mean, granted, it's only the 17th of January, but anyways. So I, I bought two more braids of fiber, so I'm real excited about that. Anyways, I don't know, I'm eating it. I <laughs> also spun, <laughs> uh, this was a long time whip that I actually forgot I had started because it was in said bin. And it is... Uh, the it's also a sign that we have a lot of bobbins. It is. Well, when you, you can just... Okay, that was, that was you. You bought like 13 of them. It's not me. I have no shame. Anyways, uh, so this is the Woolly Witch, and she does roll eggs, which are, they look like this. Mm -hmm. So all of the fiber is blended on a blending board, and then it's, it's rolled off. So that's how you get the, the fun little, like, cigars of fiber. But so the Woolly Witch, um, and it is... A Merino, Bamboo, and Angelina, or Firestar, however we want to call it. Sparkle. Sparkle. And the colorway is Chinese Lantern, and it ended up being a three-ply worsted. So this one, I did a thinner single, and then did a chain ply to apply it back on itself. And I love it. It's really pretty. So in the fiber, it was the kind of almost bricky red, fire engine red, mm -hmm. and then bits of black and gold, and the way it kind of blended out and, and spun together, I so nice. You enjoy spinning from Rolex. I do. Mm -hmm. And you're so better... Sure. I cannot do a long draw at all. I, like love, a I love a long like draw. Like a true woolen spun, I'm so bad. But you actually do it really well. Well, thank you. Which is... Which is why my we, yarn ends up being super fluffy and not tightly. We, we won't go down this rabbit hole today, but we typically spin a worsted or semi-worsted mm -hmm. yarn, meaning a short forward draw. And the Rolags are better suited to a different type of technique. Right. Traditionally, they're intended for long draw spinning, which is where you have the... The twist in the fiber at the orifice, which is where the maiden, which is what holds this in place, um, so the orifice would be on this side, and that that is usually where your twist begins and enters your web of fiber, and so when you're spinning long draw, your twist is traveling down the fiber. So you'll have this stationary, and then you'll let the twist as you kind of pull back and draw out the fiber, so your fiber is going backwards. Whereas in a short forward draw, your your hand is stationary and you're pulling the fiber forward. And the the main difference is, I guess, we're gonna go down. That, the got, that got really kind of complicated. We're gonna go down the rabbit hole anyway, <laughs> since you just shoved us in. Um, I just kicked everybody in the rabbit hole. The, the main difference is, so you may hear about woolen spun versus worsted spun yarn, mm -hmm. and in that context, it's not talking about the weight of yarn, like DK worsted chunky. Correct. Uh, they're talking about how the fibers are organized in the yarn. So in a worsted spun, you you would often do like a carded prep or a prep that lines all of your fibers up straight mm -hmm. and you pull them forward so that when they go into the yarn, your single that you're starting with, they're all aligned in the same direction. So it creates a nice, tightly spun, not so airy yarn, mm -hmm. which is what many of the yarns that we buy commercially uh, are that, that's how they're right. made. With a woolen spun, you the fibers, actually, you don't want them to go in lined up at all. Mm -hmm. Part of what makes them airier, puffier, and spongier is the fact that they're not organized. So it mm -hmm. works really well, actually, to do that woolen spun from 
a roll lag because they're going this way and you're pulling perpendicular to the way the fibers are organized. Mm -hmm. So it actually creates a really nice wool and spun yarn. Well, and that's that's why even though the, there's bamboo, Angelina, and Superwash Merino, normally that would make like a really silky, shiny yarn. That's why it's not. Because it's... Because it's a woolen... A woolen... Spun. Spun. That's great. It'll be really nice. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. Mittens? But I might make mittens. A hat? Uh, probably not a hat, but I might make mittens with it. Or just stash it in our hand spun cube. Oh, never to use it again. What am I going to make with it? Uh, I'm going to make a skein of yarn that will sit right back here. But yeah, so I've been spinning a lot. And then I spun last, last week. I got the... The two braids of hybrid done, so. It's, I, I, I don't want to say I'm in a crafty funk, but I'm just not sure what I want to work on with like knitting or crocheting. So that's one of the, the great things about spinning is it's super simple, it's meditative, and it, you just go. And you have something that's made after, what? Are you laughing at me because I want to cast on a million projects? No, I'm laughing. You you went somewhere different than where I thought you were going to go. I thought you were going to say, that's where it's nice to have 47 hobbies. Because you can go... I mean... I mean, you, true. You but... only have a couple more craft hobbies than I do, so I, I don't have a lot of room to talk. But sometimes you don't know what you want to make. And you right. know we, we joke about buying yarn and using yarn are two different things. Spinning yarn... And, and then knitting with hand spun are also two different things. It's actually a really good bang for your buck project because, well, and especially if you're processing your own fleece or your fiber or whatever, but the process of spinning the yarn is one craft guess, hobby, craft. <laughs> and then using that yarn is totally different. So Completely can, optional. Yeah. Well, hey. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry I'm point, point, pointing there, not um, to you. But, you know, you can weave, spin, or weave, crochet, uh, knit, whatever you want with it. But it it really is like a double duty hobby. I'm surprised you're not felting gnomes with your fiber yet. No. It hasn't occurred to you. Anyways, so that is all I have for finished objects this week. I have a couple of additional ones. Let's go. I've been full of hat energy. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm going to use technology here. I'm going to attempt to use technology that I don't know how to use. So I've been in a hat knitting mood, which is really odd because I don't, I don't knit a ton of hats. I usually knit the hats and you wear them. Because, because hello, I'm bald. So I knit the Stony Point hat by Haley Sharping, who is Pearls and Pepper adorable and she has a million hat patterns she has a lot of amazing hats yeah so i knit this hat and it's unblocked so the tension actually i'm gonna brag on myself for a minute because my tension is really good i think i'm also on a mission to knit nothing but color work since you called me out and said i don't knit color work I... <laughs> So okay. this is this That's is not, my new hobby. This is not is what I meant. That's color work knitting. Meant. So this is the Stony Point hat by Haley Sharping, Pearls and Pepper. This was a great color work project. I actually cast on for a different hat. So I cast on this yarn, and I didn't like the color combo for the hat that I was knitting. So I ripped it back to the ribbing, and a different pattern of hers, this one, had the same stitch count, needle size, everything. So I came up with a new plan, which is this. So this hat calls for a worsted weight yarn, uh, which I've got here, which is a Malabrigo deep stash, who knows, Malabrigo Rios. I have no idea what color it is. When I tell you we are using so stash much for right show now, notes. <laughs> I don't know. There was no tag. This yes, was, there was no, this was wound in a bag. Oh, that's really old then. Yeah, it was a project that you Probably started. In the very beginning, I was like, who needs to keep tags for their yarn? <laughs> who wants to know what color this is later? Bad idea. Keep the tag. So Always I, keep the tag. I literally found this in a project bag wound up. So it's, I know it's Malabrigo Rios. I have no idea what color. Then the contrasting color, the gold here, uh, the pattern calls for a worsted held with Ooh. a mohair. And so the worsted, oh my gosh. Hold on, guys. I'm falling over. Yeah. Nice. So the 
main part, the worsted yarn, is Plucky Knitter Cozy DK, which guys, Superwash Merino Camel. It is dreamy. I So I actually used that yarn for a shawl of Haley's. I love I wasn't going to show this, but I've got it here. So, <laughs> so I use that, if you go back a couple of episodes ago, in the in the beginning, it might be second or third episode, I, I knit a shawl out of that. A shawl. A shawl. So good. What shawl? Cellula. It had that, and then like a cream, creamy yellow with speckles. Oh, yeah. Yep. Really good. Yeah. And then the mohair that I held with it. Also, we've got yarn coming out of our ears. Literally. <laughs> literally and figuratively. It's amazing when you're like, oh, this is fun. I wonder if we have a mohair that matches. And guess what we do? Because... That's the whole point of a stash. Yeah. Our pantry, well stocked. Thank you, Kevin. We stole that. Uh, so the um, the mohair, I'm losing all my words. Why are we so crazy today? Probably this is only my second cup of tea. We haven't slept in three days. Yeah, that's a whole other story. So this is Ella Ray Silky Kid. It is a kid mohair and silk. Uh, so it, it made a really nice fabric. And then this is a pom-pom also from our stash. I have no idea what she's made out of, but she's real cute. Probably like Arctic Fox. I don't know. So this, uh, this is a I new hat. hat. I do too. And I was a little nervous. You know, sometimes color work uh, can be tight around the biggest part of your head. Give us, give us a side view. Mm -hmm. That's real, that's real oh, cute. sure. I'm obsessed with this hat and I never want to take it off. So I might just wear it for a minute until I show the next hat. So I'd highly recommend this one. It was a super fun knit. I think I cast it on one evening and I finished it maybe the next day. Yeah, if, you, if you're new to color work, I would highly recommend trying a, a color work hat because it's just small enough that it's not a huge commitment, but if there's issues with tension or the colors just aren't working out, it's, it's not the end of the world to rip back. I'm pretty pleased with my tension too. It mm -hmm. is excellent if I do say so. And I think there were only, um, I prefer magic loop. And so I do catch some of my floats that aren't long enough to need it. If you were knitting like on a 16 inch circular needle, mm -hmm. but sometimes I catch. I love knitting hats on a 16 inch circular. I and you hate it. Hate it. Yeah. I would prefer. And I don't, I don't get that. I don't know why. It's how I hold the yarn and move the needles. It's just comfortable. It's not that I, it's not that I don't like it. It's not comfortable for my right hand in particular because I move that needle differently than I can mm. if I'm on a, it's the same reason I don't like nine inch circulars. Um, yeah, those I can't do. Yeah. Those are just too small for my fingers. So again, plucky knitter, cozy DK. cozy DK in the color triple crown. I don't think I said that before. And then this is Ella Ray mohair silk in the colorway stardust. And I actually love this is, these are very different colors, mm -hmm. but they really, they came together really nicely. And I'm really happy with this hat. I would make another one hands down. Um, I knit this, uh, I knit it. There's only one size in the pattern. It's knit on a US 5, 3.75 millimeter and a US 7, 4.5 millimeter. And weirdly enough, shock and awe, totally unrelated to my next project. I knit it exactly as the pattern was written. I made no intentional or unintentional <laughs> modifications. <laughs> yeah, so highly, highly recommend. I have one more. You don't have any other FOs, do you? No more foes? No. My next project, oh gosh, hold on, technology. I'm also using using the Knit Companion app, which I'm loving, except I don't know how to use it. So bear with me, guys, while I pretend like I act like, like I know what's happening. So this is the Langley hat by Jody Brown of the Grocery Girls, Jody Brown Designs. And this hat... Mrs. Brown's bags. Yeah, Mrs. Brown's bags. This hat I knit for my mother like a year ago. Also, while I'm thinking about it, thank you so much for all of the really sweet comments about how adorable my mother is. She's so funny. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> the cat has joined. So my, my mother is... She hopped up on my lap. My mother is very shy uh, and actually is behind on some of our episodes because she's afraid I'm talking about her all the time. I mean... Hi. 
So every time there was a comment on the video about how cute she was or how good she looked in her sweater, I took a screenshot and sent it to her and I've just totally embarrassed her. But it was really fun. So thank you guys for all the really sweet comments about my mom. So I knit this hat for her, the Langley hat, like a year ago and sent it to her. Now my mother lives in Oklahoma, which is relevant, I guess, because their true winter or when it gets cold is really short. And one of my favorite things about having no hair is that I can wear hats whenever I want and I don't mess anything up up here. Right. But you know, my, my mother, you, like I, I get that people are sensitive. Nobody wants hat hair like walking into work for the day. So my mom asked- Which is why I decided to just like shave all of my hair off because I was sick of having to deal with it because I wanted to wear my hats. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom asked for a hat. She wanted something like in this spirit like a hat that would stand up a little bit. She wanted a pom-pom. So I thought the Langley hat would be great. Now here's, uh, again, where we have no idea what's going on. Uh, I was watching Needles at the Ready while we were this week, and mm -hmm. Ray and Kevin were talking about how organized they are and how they take all these little pieces of yarn and put them in a bag with the tags so that they know what they are later. That does not happen in this house. We are... No. Yeah, no. All I remember about this yarn is it had a tag this big, it was square, and it ripped off <laughs> while it was still in this game. So who knows where it is. So I don't, I mean, I would have had the information, but I knit this a year ago. Now, why are we talking about it today? I remember now where I'm going with all of this. So I was thinking, like, maybe I'll knit my mom a slightly larger sized hat that won't smash her hair down so that she'll be able to wear it. But I didn't want to knit something like this, like a mohair worsted weight color work hat, because she lives in Oklahoma. Like it doesn't get cold enough all the time that she's going to right. ruin her hair just to have a cute hat on. Which means that we should probably mail that like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so I knit this hat for her a year ago and she's had it for 10 months. Well, she just admitted to me like three months ago that it's too big and it doesn't Not fit even. her. It was like a week, like two weeks ago. And then so, you, you forced her, like you bullied her into mailing it back. She loved the hat, but the hat didn't fit. It was too big. And this is, it's actually a fingering weight yarn. The pattern calls for a sport weight or DK. And this was fingering, so I just held it double. Um, but the first hat was too big, so I got my mom to mail it back. She she was afraid she was going to hurt my feelings right. by saying it was too big. And I said... It, That's the one thing about if you're making a gift for somebody... Oh my gosh. And, or if I'm receiving a gift, if it doesn't work out, the best, the best thing that they or you can do is to just tell the person that made it, like, hey, I love it. Or, I love the hat. Or I don't love fit. it. And here's, <laughs> like, here's what's wrong with it. And, like, they'll fix it. If, yeah. Or if not, then they'll make a new one. Because, like, the worst thing to do, or for me at least, is to gift someone something and then they don't wear it. Well, it's not going to do any... Like, I appreciate the sentiment of having a hand-knit item that right. sits in a drawer and you never use it. So I was very happy to re-knit the hat. So she sent it back, and I re-knit it this week. Um, I ripped the whole thing out. I had to wash the yarn or soak the yarn uh, so that it would relax because it looked like it had been through a crimping iron about 40 times. Uh, and I'm sure you can imagine what it looked like. So I re the hat, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. So I have no idea what this yarn is, because I threw the tag away a year ago, but it does have a gold Stellina or sparkle in it. Um, I, don't know, I don't even know where that would have come from. I don't even know what it is. I don't buy sparkly yarn. Right? Like, we're literally staring at this thinking, what was this? <laughs> Who knows? So this is a, it's a great cabled pattern. It has a nice uh, one by one kind of ribbed detail in between the, the pattern or in between the cables. The cables, there's three on the front. The back is plain stockinette. And I love too that the cables are offset. So the outer two um, alternate and then the inner one kind of goes halfway in between them, which is great. This was a super quick knit. I re-knit it again in, I cast it on three nights ago and finished it, I think the next day. So size wise, guys, I have no idea what I did. You would think that I was a heavy drinker or maybe a drug addict. I don't know. I think it just 
fit solidly into the camp of patterns or suggestions and no one reads them until they mess something up. Hmm, I don't know. All right. So a couple of things. My mom commented that the fabric of the original hat was very floppy. I forget. Nobody likes floppy fabric. Nobody wants a floppy hat. So I knew that I would go down in needle size. Jody's pattern is also great. It has a small, medium, and large stitch count. And the pattern itself is very versatile because the front panel has the pattern and then the back is all stocking it. But Jody gives you three different stitch counts. She's chewing on your sweater. <sighs> so she's she's sitting on my lap. Right. And she like she likes to nibble on like elbows. Or wool that can't be replaced. Mm -hmm. So I had every intention of knitting halfway between the stitch count for the large and the medium and going down a needle size because I thought, well, that, that should give me a slightly stiffer fabric that'll help the hat stand up a little bit. And it wasn't until I was starting the crown decreases that I realized I picked a random number between the small and the medium, not the medium and the large. You're and just I, doing your own thing. And I went down a needle size. Like, what was I even doing? But the good news I'm is... I'm going to preface this with... Well, it's not even preface because we're already too deep down the hole. But you kept asking me questions and none of them like went together. Like You Who were knows? bouncing all over the also, place. Also, what is happening with my collar right now? It's making me mad. Um, so I finished the hat. It's great. I think my mom is going to love this much more. I actually like the way it fits. There's still plenty of room... And this is knitting halfway between the medium and small mm -hmm. on a, mm -hmm. this is a US four and a six. The pattern calls for a five and a seven. So I am a little bit of a looser knitter. Mm -hmm. It's not uncommon for me to need to go down a needle size in order to get gauge. Um, so I'm probably pretty close to Jody's gauge on the smaller needle size. Cause let's be honest, I did not check a gauge watch. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to be able to send this back to mom. We'll get it in the mail on Tuesday, and I think she'll love it. Pom pom of unknown origin. Big and white and poofy. My mom giggled when she saw it. She was like, that's real big. <laughs> she wanted a big pom pom. She wanted a big pom pom. So it's great. I'm really pleased with it. So I finished a pair of socks and two hats. Go me. Go you. Let's go me. Let's go into whips. Whoosh, whoosh. That's for Ray. So, <laughs> well, okay, while well, I'm still talking about spinning, I started some more... See, in my head, I've been spinning so much, I'm like, yeah, sure, I can buy more fiber. No, just just cut my credit card. Although I've got the number memorized, so that's not going to help. Um, I could report it stolen. You wouldn't. I would. Speaking of which, I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, oh. I bought some hi. fabric internationally it was coming from the uk Seriously, what's up? and my bank suspended my my and this is my debit card look how cozy i look i'm telling the story here so my bank suspended my card without telling me because they thought that it was suspicious activity i was like have you looked at my bank right? account in the last year i'm trying to think of what you would have to do with your credit card to make it look suspicious stop right. using it right because i bought fabric from scotland <laughs> whatever and they didn't even tell me that's the thing like i thought i was at the grocery store it's because you used your debit card didn't you so you wouldn't find out hmm. our credit cards are linked so anytime i use make a purchase online he gets a notification for it which i wish you just turn off already <laughs> I didn't turn it on on purpose, but now it's really handy. So that's when I use my debit card, so he doesn't find out. Anyways. That, that's why they. That's why it was unusual activity, because you used your debit card. Had it been your credit card, they would have been like, oh, it must be Tuesday. Yeah. So I had, I had to call and, like, unfreeze my, my credit or my debit card. And I'm like, at what point were they going to tell me that they were holding it for suspicious activity? Which wasn't suspicious at all. For them, know. it probably was. No, no. Anyways, so long story short, I'm spinning more yarn, <laughs> more fiber. So this is what I've got so far. It's probably about a third of oh, it. Oh, look, green. It really is the theme of the day. I know. Um, this is a 
Three Waters Farm. It's a Polworth Tessa silk top, so it's 85% wool, 15% silk, and the colorway is Time So. I'm gonna start that over. I hope I'll get my baby aspirin. The colorway is Time Stood Still, and so it's really all different colors, but that's where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. And so it was in it was in larger sections. I and think this is Three Waters Farm. This one. Um, Campfire. Could be. This is. Anyways. So it's in larger sections of color. And what I've been doing is breaking it up or dividing it so that when I apply it, the, the color's more blended out. Just because there's a lot of fun colors together. What are you doing to and it? I, it's going to be a two-ply. When you said breaking it apart, did you like split the whole braid down the middle? Yep. So... First, I had the, the genius idea to split it in half lengthwise. So I took the whole braid, un, un, did the chain, and then I split it in half, like, you know, like that. And then where there's a large chunk of color, much longer than this, I have either been splitting it in half like this. Oh, so you've gone full crazy. So, yeah. I'm, I'm just... You're just ripping it apart? Tearing it apart. Okay. But so, because I want I want to blend the colors a little bit, um, because there's such long repeats in some of them that I don't I don't want a giant pool of green and then a ton of colors. I want it kind of more evened out a bit. So, which is I think is happening. What do you think you'll get? You mm -hmm. said you're gonna do a two ply. Mm -hmm. It'll it'll probably be a sport weight. Sport TK. Mm, it'll it'll for sure be a sport weight. It's on, a, it's on a little bit thinner side, but so I've got that. And then if you all remember the, <laughs> the amazing Christmas yarn saga in which I had another complete meltdown. I look like I'm outside in the winter. So too much. So here's, here's the yarn and that is Murray and Co. Woolgut. Yeah. Well, I don't even remember. I don't know what's happening today. Well, goods. Um, so this was this is the yarn, and the colorway is Holly. Oh my gosh, that's not even right. <laughs> Let me just start over. So the <laughs> the colorway is Holly and the Ivy. Man. Oh look, green. I love it. So this was my swatch. I was like, ooh, that's fun. And then I started knitting that pattern. Totally didn't look right. It looked awful. To no fault of the yarn. It is not the pro there's not a problem with the yarn. It is just the yarn needs the right pattern for it to kind of bring forth its true beauty. So then I was like, you know what? Let's make a flax. Love the way it fits. Easy pattern. I'm like, oh, that's that's fun. Like very not super pooly. Like it's looking great. Mind you were thinking, oh, this is subtle. Yeah, well, not subtle, but controlled chaos. Um, mind you, I have already ripped out, like, an entire ball's worth of yarn, so I was past the sleeve splitting point before I decided that this was too much. I really don't think it would have been that bad. It, it started to get crazier, and I had begun alternating you wanted it. You wanted it to not be whimsical, though. I wanted it, again, controlled chaos. So I wanted it to be very, like, like, I'm, I'm okay with this section up here where it's pretty even, but when we start to get in, like, weird zigzaggy pooling sections, I, that just, no, I couldn't do it. So, some of you will laugh at this and think that I'm crazy. By the way, there were so many comments and oh, suggestions yes. for patterns. So many wonderful Tons. suggestions. And... I will definitely be making a few of them. And then someone actually was like, why don't you try making... What is making... she doing? She's playing the llama again. She's very busy. Why today. don't you try making another Spice Guardian? So some of you may remember the saga of the Spice Guardian, in which it almost drove me mad knitting it, because I screwed it up many times. Many, many times. Many, many, many times. And... Now that I've done that, I feel like I can make a second one no problem. So sure enough, I swatched for the spice. And I love it. But colors come through really good. Really right. well. So it it and tones purée. it. it to 
and it tones accuracy. It, it tones it down enough to where it allows the colors to pop, but that neutral background really kind of evens it out a bit. It's going to be beautiful. So I am using the Moran Co. Marie and Co. And this is a DK, but it's a it's a heavy DK, so I, I would I'm fe I'm feeling comfortable with my gauge swatch. I got gauge knitting it at a worsted weight. And then this is a non superwash BFL. So at the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival many years ago, I had bought a few fleeces and had them spun up at Utopia Wool Mill here in That's Wisconsin. Really and so it's not not really a chocolatey. It's almost like a gray, a very gray brown. It's a chocolatey brown, but it's it's undyed. That's mm -hmm. natural, and it's heathered because the natural fiber mm -hmm. has color variation. Well, and, and I had bought so it's like a light brown. Two fleeces. So one of mm -hmm. one of them was a very dark, and then one of them was lighter. And I just had her blend them together and spin them. But so those are my two colors together. I'm gonna make another spice cardigan because. That seems to have done the trick, and I, I I love it, and the swatch feels great. It looks it looks nice. I I did knit my swatch in the round. Technically, I cheated, so I did the thing where you knit across and then have the long strand in the back and just kind of like, almost like you're making an I cord, so you only have but the a right re a really bad one. Yeah, so you only have the right side rows facing, because the. The cardigan is knit in the round, and then it's steeped. And since this is a superwash, I will do the crocheted reinforcement on the steek, but then I will also do a line of stitching on my sewing machine, just to lock it in place. But I love the way it knit up. I think it's going to be, be great. I think it's going to be just the perfect application to to use that yarn for. Mm -hmm. So yeah. That oh, and final whip. I have been doing a ton of weaving. You're not going to say it? No? Okay. Every time I say, I'm going to weave, he likes to chime in, oh, where are you going? <laughs> if I hear it one more time, I, I will, I will just go. I'm just going to leave. So I've been weaving dish towels. They look so good. So that's almost, almost a plaid, kind of. But, so I did this warp a long time ago. I think, when, when did I start them? August? No. It's been a while. Ish? I don't know. It's, it's been a while. And things just got in the way, and I, I, put it, I put them down for a long time. So, here's another one. Mm-hmm. So, so I've been doing a burgundy, colors. a tan, and a couple of different grays. Mm -hmm. So there's a, like uh, like a, a medium gray, a dark gray. There's the black, cream, burgundy, and orange, like a pumpkin color. And so I I did an eight yard, eight and a half yard warp, and I will get eight towels out of that. Think purposely thinking that I will get enough towels to keep for us, and then some to give away. I don't know if I'll do that again, just because it's a lot of the same warp, and I'm I'm, get, I'm getting kind of bored with it. It's so I've done... I think we discussed the the downside. The benefit is the warping is the most time consuming mm -hmm. part of the process. Yeah, it took me like three hours to do that warp. So it, especially with one that long, like mm -hmm. it's it's just time consuming. So our thinking at the time was, well, if I do a longer warp. I get more towels out of one warping. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it is more efficient. But I think the right. downside that you're finding now is you can only have one project on the loom at a time mm -hmm. and you can't take it off. Right. And, and so and I'm, and I'm, now you have no choice but to finish. And I'm not, I'm not going to, I mean, I could in theory just say like, you know what, I'm done with, I'm done with this. I've had enough of these towels and cut the warp off. But it's a lot of work to get that warped up like that because it's doubled. So I have doubled my warp and it is 251 ends and that's eight yards long, eight and a half yards long. So imagine that's 1600 yards back and forth doubled. So I guess it's a lot of work to warp it. Well, so plus it's, a, it's a lot of cotton. 
Yes. I mean, if you cut it at this point, you wouldn't be able to use it for anything. No, I, you, no. No, I wouldn't be able to. I'd have to restring the warp and it would be just a mess. But, so I'm excited and I'm glad I did it. If, if I had planned it out a little bit more where, like maybe that might be a good winter project now because I'm not in between a ton of projects that I can sit and devote like two weeks to crank out all the eight towels. But at the time it was just not the best application. But so I've done four solid towels so far. So I've done a cream, a light gray, an orange and a maroon. Solid weft on that striped warp. Correct. So I've, I've, chose, I've chosen one color to do the whole towel. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm doing kind of a plaid style. So I'm doing the same width of the colors. So, you know, the, the gray, cream, black, cream, burgundy, cream, black, cream. So I'm doing that in my weft. And so I'll do that for probably two towels because I really like the effect that that's giving. But it's even more time consuming because I have to switch the colors and, and weave the, the ends in. and So it's not bad, but it's just more time consuming. And then I think I'll do another cream and maybe maybe a burgundy i'm not sure i like the i would like the way the cream towels turn out because it really allows the the warp to pop but so i'll have those done long story short uh next time to show and i'm excited to start some like more springy towels the colors are going to be really nice mm -hmm. the and we really like the towels we use the set that you made mm -hmm. the first set all the time yep so i i i i use the maurice brassard 8-2 weaving cotton and 251 ends on a 12 and a half dent reed so that means there's 12 and a half ends per inch and did i say 251 ends yes Total? yeah i did um double my warp single weft and it creates a really nice towel so wash it twice before we use it and it shrinks the cotton just enough and i love them they work great mm -hmm. so, and they're really pretty mm-hmm and you'll finish them on the sewing machine. Yep, so what I'll do is, so in between each towel, I've taken just like a dishcloth cotton, a, a worsted dishcloth cotton, and you don't have to do this, but it just makes it easier to separate the towels. So in between each towel, after I have my full weft amount, which is 33 inches, which finished and washed will end up somewhere around 28, 29. And I, I weave two strands of that in between each towel, so it creates kind of a separation, and then I start my next towel. But on each side of that worsted strand, I will do a, a tiny zigzag on my sewing machine to lock the weft in place, and then I will pull out the worsted weight yarn, cut it, and then do a fo double folded hem. When do you wash it? You can, you can either wash it before, which someone recommended, just like you're knitting, before you steek, it helps to block it sometimes so the stitches lock together. Mm. So I might try that this time because last time I cut and hemmed before I washed them. I don't think it makes a difference. I mean, it's, it's a preference thing, sure. but I think I will wash the entire piece of fabric first, then hem and cut them apart mm. or cut them apart and then hem. And then I might wash them again. So I might do like a single, single wash cut him and then wash him again i just see two ears over the sewing machine like she's staring at us <laughs> um so yeah so I'm, I'm doing a ton of weaving and i've got i've got some other projects that i've just recently started but there's not enough progress on them to show but so i'll have a lot of stuff to share next time what are you working on what am i working on well i'll tell you what i'm working on and then i'll tell you what i'm not working on mm -hmm. so i'll show first uh, inside my By the Lakeside bag that Sandy sent us for Christmas. So thank you, Sandy. This is adorable. And I love the little bears and ornaments. So I've not been knitting my Ruska sweater, and we'll talk about why. But I decided last night, apparently I'm in an accessory mode. Lots of small projects because I'm not over committing. I'm supposed to be knitting a Montrealer. I'm supposed to be finishing my Ruska, and clearly I'm not doing any of that. So last night I decided to cast on the uh, Tin Can Knits pattern, The World's Simplest Mittens. Uh, this is a great mitten pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, so if you've not knit mittens 
or you want just a basic gift um, or a basic mitten pattern. Uh, as Caleb mentioned earlier, talking about the flax sweater, this mitten pattern comes in a maybe a small, medium, and large. It may even have a fourth or fifth size. Um, they've got several sizes. And then it gives you stitch counts for fingering, DK, worsted, and chunky. So you've got four different yarn weight options and then multiple sizes based on each one of those yarn weights, which makes the pattern really versatile. So I pulled out of my stash, and guys, I am so proud she's, of myself she's here. Oh. I, we don't know I don't what's know what happening. She's We're now those people that are just going to talk about our cat. Um, where's the other cat, by the way? She's asleep on the bed. So I am knitting uh, the mittens. This is just a, a mitten for myself, a nice medium weight winter mitten. Mm -hmm out of Cascade Eco Alpaca, which is technically a worsted. Ow. Sorry. We should just give up. I don't know what's happening today. Cascade Eco Alpaca. This is undyed, so it's three different colors. Deep, three, deep stash. Or four, I think it's actually four colors uh, of natural alpaca. If you haven't knit with alpaca before, it's interesting, um, it's a heavy fiber for the like the fiber itself is heavier so this yarn which looks like if you were to look at it you would say maybe it's a heavy fingering mm -hmm. or sport weight at best but it's 100 grams and yardage wise it's worsted it's 220 yards per 100 grams so it's solidly worsted weight but the yarn itself is not as big around as what you would normally expect for a worsted weight and that's a very typical of alpaca mm -hmm. I bought this in 2009, the year that I learned how to knit at my local yarn store. So we're talking um, 11 years in stash. I'm real proud. That's deep. I'm real proud. And I am holding it together. I thought because, again, it's alpaca, um, we like to include... A... What are you doing? She's back. <laughs> yeah, here she is. There's her periscope. Um... <laughs> I don't... Are you comfortable? <laughs> I mean, really. She's very busy today. Um, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about right now. Deep stash. Deep stash. Alpaca. Alpaca. Yep, all things are good. Um, I'm holding a <laughs> strand of mohair. <laughs> Look, you can see your ears. Oh, hi. I don't know if she looks displeased or pleased. It's hard to tell. Sorry. So I'm holding a, stra a strand yarn. of mohair with the yarn. I think it's a nice compliment. We like to hold mohair with our uh, yarn for mittens because it gives a little bit of extra insulation. Um, it helps fill in some of the gaps in the yarn. You can see the halo in the mohair. It's just a nice addition. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you crying? Yes. What is happening? Uh, I've got the giggles now. So this is, again, the Cascade Eco Alpaca. I'm sorry I'm saying that for the fifth time. I don't know what's happening at all now. And then Not So Deep Stash for my birthday in 2019. It was a special birthday. We went to New York City for the weekend and took a little trip to Pearl Soho. Mm -hmm. And this is the Tussock, which is their mohair silk uh, yarn. So I'm holding this nice silvery gray color with the alpaca. And here is my first mitten. I actually cast this on last night while we were watching uh, Discovery of Witches. I love the marled look. And it, it translates through really well into a mitten. It's not very busy. Oh, you're going to put it on. Oops. So this, uh, this is the large size, which I think is an eight and a half inch uh, hand circumference, which is the largest size. And I'm using the stitch count for the DK. I was afraid the yarn would be a little bit too thick to knit at the fingering stitch count because the fingering recommends knitting on a, a US zero and a two. And that on a zero would be unpleasant to knit. Not, not impossible. It would just be a really dense gauge. It would be really dense. It would be a very warm mitten. Mm -hmm. um, so I followed the pattern exactly for the cuff using a US three. The hand of the mitten calls for a five, but I'm a bit of a loose knitter um, and I was I, I didn't knit a gauge swatch, but I was a few rows in before I had started the thumb gusset and realized that I was uh, too big on my stitch count 
and I thought it would make a, a nicer, denser fabric. So I went down to a US 4, uh, but other... Whoa. Seriously? She's going rogue. Okay. Get off the table. You guys are going to get cat butthole. Uh, well, she didn't turn around. She got thrown off instead. I just pushed her off. There. Yep. So this is this is a pair of mittens for me. Uh, I started it last night, cast on, and I finished uh, the top this morning. And I will finish the thumb after we're done recording today. So I'll have this one done. And then probably this evening, cast on the second one. Uh, I'll hope to have them finished. It is finally going to get cold here. I think. Oh, uh, winter will happen. Yeah, it's it's coming slowly but surely. We're going to get punished, no doubt, uh, as we always do. So, we we lately, I would, lately, I would say in the last, I don't know, maybe ten or twelve years, we've been going going through these cycles of where winter is really disgusting and awful for like three years, and then the next year it's pretty mild. The polar vortex is tilting on its axis right now apparently it's been significantly disturbed yeah so we we typically get i don't know why we're talking about snow mittens but long story short we've not had nearly enough snow yet and february and march are typically very snowy months for us so mm -hmm. mittens will be handy we do like to take a lot of walks in the evening um when it's not horrifically cold so mm -hmm. mittens are always nice so i'll be glad to show you these they'll be done next time for sure mm -hmm. And then really quickly, I will talk about my Ruska. You guys are so sweet. There were so many positive comments. Everybody loves my Ruska. It's not even down here right now. Um, why am I not knitting it? Let's see. I am like six inches below the sleeves. I'm totally done, maybe even eight inches. I'm totally done with all the color work, just knitting stockingette. I've tried it on a couple of times and I've now decided I love that it's taken me this long to decide this, that I'm knitting a size that is too large. I'm knitting the 48 inch, which which would have given me like four to five inches of positive ease, at least. Because my chest measurement is, depends on where in COVID we're measuring this. It goes anywhere from like 41 to 43. But I don't know why I knit a 48. Like, I don't no, know what I was it's, thinking. It's more than that. No, it's a 48. Your your physical chest is oh. bigger than 41 inches. Well, I wear a 42 blazer, so probably not too much bigger. Anyway, I've decided that I'm knitting a sweater that's way too large, and the color work fabric is pretty... Because you had gone down a needle size. To get gauge. Right. Not, not just for fun, but I had to go down a needle right. size to get gauge. Long story short, I've decided that it's too big and I don't like it. So I'm going to rip the whole thing out at some point this week, and I'm going to start all over. I've also decided that the fabric is really stiff um, at gauge. I'm getting gauge, but I've decided that the fabric and the yarn combo is really stiff. Like, you know, when you finally separate for the sleeves and you get to see what the fabric is really like and you have enough of it, I think the amount of ease combined with the fact that it's a it's a heavy woolen spun worsted weight yarn. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm not I'm not digging the combo. So my plan, I need to do math to actually figure out what's gonna happen. The yarn is beautiful and the sweater is oh, beautiful. It just, needs, stunning. it just needs to be a smaller yeah, size. I just wanna rework it. I'm I'm not happy with it. And if I'm gonna end up a full sweater that's two thirds color work, I wanna be really happy with it. And I love the pattern. It's been a lot of fun to make. But I think, I think what I'm going to do is go back up to the seven, which is what the pattern calls for, mm -hmm. which is where I started with my first gauge swatch. But I really like that fabric. It's just a little bit softer. But I think I'm going to then go down two sizes. There's, a, I think, a 48, a 45, and maybe a 42. So I think I'm going to go to the 42 on a seven. But I need to do the math. I think that will give me two, maybe three inches of positive ease with that size and that stitch count. So I need to just check the pattern. It's a yoked sweater and actually I've never knit a yoked sweater. Mm -hmm. I've knit a couple of cardigans and my other sweaters have all been raglan. So I'm actually not upset about it. I was really mad at first um, because I'd just been knitting, 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 knitting and I was making a lot of progress and I love the sweater. I'm so happy with it, but I wanna make sure that I get the sweater that I wanna get in the right. end. And um, there's a couple of tension things I'm excited to be able to fix when I re-knit. 
um, the, the widest part of the color work before I split for the sleeves. Um, the tension is a little bit uneven. Um, so I'm actually really looking forward to re-knitting it, but there will be a moment of silence and maybe a glass of wine when I unknit like 35 hours worth of color work knitting. Practice, right? But it's okay. Honestly, I have no regrets. Um, I would much rather stop now mm -hmm. and go back and re-knit it. I just, there's, I don't... There's nothing worse than knitting an entire project only to realize you either A, don't like the yarn or the way it knit up, or it it just doesn't, it doesn't work. Some Like the, either the size or right. the shape, the color. And sometimes you need to get farther in the mm -hmm. process to figure it out. Right. And that's okay. And this is, I think, the best part of knitting. I mean, I enjoy the process of knitting mm -hmm. and I enjoy the finished project. And so, you know, time is time. It's fine. I think what I'm most excited about, though, is this is the beauty of knitting. If you don't like what you have, change it. It's not permanent. You know, it's not permanent. Unless you steek. Then, <laughs> then, then you're pretty much stuck in, the, in a rut there. Right. Um, and, you know, at this point, it's a woolen spun yarn. I didn't do anything... I'm not a fan of spit splicing um, or anything like that. I'm, I'm going to say something really controversial. I don't splice. I knot. Oh, I tie knots, yeah. I will knot again. I don't care what garment it is. I will always tie a knot and weave in my hands. I'm not afraid of superwash. You just have to know what to do with it. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and depending on how you weave in your ends, you can't tell. But, like, I'm not going to rush and join. I'm not going to spit splice. I'm, mostly I'm just, just going to knot it. I'm mostly just lazy and don't want to do all those things. So I'm in a really good place. Uh, the yarn is so grippy and it's woolen spun. So it's it's going to you know kind of felt a little bit when it gets blocked anyway. So right. I'm not even worried about the ends. It's going to be it's going to be fine. So I'm actually really looking forward to going back and redoing it. Um, I'm going to make a small adjustment to the neckline because it's a little bit bigger than I intended it for it to be. So I'm I'm either going to go down uh, a needle size. So, you know, this is just a really long practice, like a three week, week. four week. I mean, you really hit, hit the Ruska sweater hard around Christmas time. Well, we had some PTO around the holidays and mm -hmm. I spent the whole holiday working on that sweater. So yeah. it's okay. It happens. I mean, I basically <laughs> read it my spice cardigan, I don't know, three times <laughs> and now I'm knitting another one. So I'm excited. I want to get that. I... I know I told you guys, I, I say crippling anxiety, which is a, a bit of a joke because I'm fortunate that I don't suffer from actual anxiety, but I you do suffer not, from like creative like I get, analysis paralysis. I, well, I get overwhelmed with too many projects on the needles. I don't appreciate that. So I am also very committed, which is why I haven't gotten mad and just cast on another sweater instead. And I've been which making what I would do. small things. I'm going to rip it out and then immediately start it over. So you guys will get to see new progress Maybe we'll record a little video to post in our stories as I'm, you know, ripping, ripping it out apart. and drinking wine and crying into a cheeseburger. I don't know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot happening. <laughs> I'm going to need you to figure all of that yeah. out. Yeah, so uh, Ruska is, she'll be back. But she is, she'll be back. she's in timeout. She's going to get reborn like a phoenix. She will rise from the ashes. Although I don't intend to light it on you fire. You don't light it on fire. A, because that yarn oh, it's is so a, good. It, it's amazing. But it also... Sorry, my lips are really dry. Mine have been dry, too. And Winter. I've noticed, like, three times I'm going... So there's going to yeah. be some weird comment <laughs> about, like... Um, the yarn, the colors that are, you're knitting the sweater out of always go out of stock. So, like, as soon as she puts them in stock, like, they sell out super fast. Mm -hmm. So, like, since this was a kit, everything you needed was put together. So, like, don't light it on fire, because I don't know when we'll be able to recreate this. Oh, no. I love <laughs> I love the yarn. I love the sweater. She will, she will be back. Better than ever. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to see her finished until maybe the end of February. That's okay. But... It'll be cold here until at least June. <laughs> So that's it. That's all I've got. Uh, I don't have any other whips. I am I... refusing to spin. Why? I'm going to finish my Ruska. Oh. Because I want to cast on the Wixom. I am supposed to be... Meanwhile, I'm like, let's spin this. Let's cast on this. Let's 
I want to cast on the Wixom sweater. All of the I'm price. supposed to be knitting a Montrealer starting January 1st. I haven't even bought yarn. I have the yarn for the stripes. That's as far as I've gotten. I mean, baby steps. My life is a mess. A <laughs> we are a mess today. Uh, Otherwise. Uh, the last thing that I have to talk about is there's going to be a shop update on Saturday, January 23rd at 1 p.m. Central Time. Six days. Six days. And I, I don't think it's going to involve the exported fabric, but that will be in a future update. And it's going to be really amazing. Imported fabric? Yep. It was exported from the UK. Imported in... Yeah. It, whatever. Anyways, so long story short, shop update, Saturday, January 23rd. At 1 p.m. What are you going to have in it? There is going to be... Uh, bags. 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 There's going to be a bunch of midwinter themed. So they're not, they're not Christmassy, but they're kind of that transition of like late winter, early spring. Um, we're still many months away from spring here, but it, it's definitely. What is that noise? I wonder, I wonder if that got captured on camera. A herd of cats running across the floor. Buster ran across the floor. Uh, anyways, so they're, they're midwintry and kind of Huga themed. So I'm really excited. I love some of the prints, but then I have a bunch of fabric ready to go for a uh, restock of the linen canvas bags. I know that everyone's been asking for that and it's taken me entirely too long to get a hold of some of that stuff and get those ready to go. But we'll have a bunch of linen canvas bags in new colors and some of the old colors. And then after that, I think I'll wait and share something fun. I'm gonna leave that as a surprise. The import? Yes. It's gonna be really special. It really, yeah, I'm really excited. Cool things coming. I'm gonna leave that little teaser there, but. Yeah. So thank you all for joining us this week and hanging out with us while we were attacked by our cat. <laughs> and, and crazy. Yeah, and, and barely had our act together. But it's been really fun kind of coming back in two weeks, so I think we're going to try and do that again and stick with this two-week schedule as long as we can, or at least until things get too crazy that we can't. It is what it is. We're only human. We're only human. H human. Human. But. Yeah, so feel free to subscribe mm -hmm. and follow us places. We... Yes, follow us on Instagram and check in the Ravelry group. We have... A couple of different threads going on. Um, one thing I wanted to mention as well is Hey Brownberry and Earth Tones Girl are hosting a mitten make along. Oh, with, I have which a, is I have a purchase. Part of the, oh, I, I forgot yeah. to show it. It's right here. Are you gonna show it? It's gonna be real weird at the end, but we're gonna do it anyway. Okay, well, hurry up. <laughs> we're caught off guard because collectively we bought one thing. In the last two weeks. I know. Guys, look. Look at my little Yeti. I can't handle it. We always do this. We get to the very... Look, I wrote it down here. Yeti stitch marker. So I have been stalking Noelle of Charmed and Dangerous on Instagram for a while. She has the cutest it's stitch really markers. Cute. Like, the cutest. But her shop updates sell out like that. And I am never paying attention when they go live. And I feel like she posts a lot of things frequently, but then they go fast. Mm -hmm. And I'm not very organized. So I bought a Yeti stitch marker. Again, Noel from Charmed and Dangerous. She is precious and has the coolest stuff in her shop. She also sent us a little stitch marker with a bird on it, which I love. So it took me... When I saw this on the counter, I was like, what is that? What is that? It took me a minute to realize that the bird is right here. Oh, you can see it better now. And there's a couple of leaves on this side. Yeah. I saw the beak. It threw me off for a second, too. But a beautiful little stitch marker that she threw in there with a little a little note for us, which is so mm -hmm. sweet. So thank you, Noelle. Definitely check her out. We'll make sure to link her shop below, Charmed and Dangerous. But I did get a Yeti. So now I have a Mitten Yeti. And I love him. He makes me very happy. She also has narwhals. But like... They're themed. 
themed narwhals. There was a gingerbread one that had a red and white candy, candy cane, cane horn. Yep. There was a... There were at least two. She I'm like, yeah, they're really them. cute. I forgot what they all are. She's bumping into the cake. So Can't anyway, understand. check out Noel, Charmed and Dangerous. But thank you for my... But great great, great way to wrap that back into Denise and Mars <laughs> are... We don't know what's happening today. ...are having a mitten make-along. So Hey Brown Berry and Earth Tones Girl. And it runs February 5th... Nope, January 15th through February 28th. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but all you have to do to participate is either check out their ins either of their Instagrams, and I'll make sure to link their profiles or their, their pages down below, especially in the YouTube notes, or the show notes that I link in YouTube. We gotta go. I went way too fast there. Um, but all you have to do to participate is post a picture on Instagram and use the hashtag MMMitLong, because they have a little kind of like podcasty type setup where it's Maker's Minutes. And 10 extra points Little. if you have a Yeti. 10 points for Gryffindor if you have a Yeti. But I'm obsessed with him. Anywho. He's my So we'll favorite. have a shop update next weekend. We want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Sorry about today. It, sorry, just, sorry not we're today. Either, we're, in, we're in that weird spot of like under-caffeinated and almost over-caffeinated. What? Or under... Speak for yourself. Under... Over-tired, under-caffeinated. I don't know. <laughs> thank you again Welcome. for joining and us. We love it. Send us, uh, send us comments, questions, anything. Uh, we love to see them. Thank you for continuing to join us. We we've gotten such such a kick out of having you with us. So stay safe, have fun. Uh, Much love to you all. Please take time to rest in the crazy year that we have started off in. Otherwise, you end up like this. Um, he was a redhead just days ago. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but, but seriously, like take time to sometimes just rest and like separate yourself from things to recharge and be able to push through some of these difficult times that we're experiencing, but we'll get there. We'll get to a better place. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. There is. And it's, you know. My, I would, I say my year for 2020 or my word for 2021 is focus. So like, just take time to center and focus yourself on the work that needs to be done, the work that's being done and like focus on yourself and your own health and mental well-being so we can focus on others. Can't pour from an empty cup. Remember that. You get really philosophical in the last 90 seconds of these. I know, I know, I know. What do but you I, but I, I love, I love the people. So I just, I, I wish them well. <laughs> But I do. Seriously, I, I, I hope you all are well and stay safe and healthy. And thanks for joining again, us. Thanks for joining us. We'll see so. you again maybe in two weeks. Two weeks. Bye, Bye. guys. <laughs>